It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. It's a Spotlight Show. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. And joining me today is the English professor after a little bit of a hiatus. John, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm excited for this interview. Um, You know, you've been trying to like dangle carrots in, in front of me and, and shiny objects and try to get me to come back. But uh, this is what brought me back. Imagine that. We, Yeah, we are talking to uh, Mark Canterbury, uh, known in WWF circles as Henry O. Godwin. And I tell you, Mark, what I want to know, you know, we always discuss beforehand what we want to ask our guest. I want to know what the O stood for. I Isn't it Oliver? That's what I always thought. I I swore it was Henry but, Oliver Godwin. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, the old uh, wiki told me that it was Orpheus or something like that. I, I have no idea. We need to but, ask. Him. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe Mark can tell us what the O stood for in Henry O. Godwin. Yeah, for sure, John. There, this guy. Henry O. Godwin has wrestled everybody we could think of right now. From The Undertaker to Tom Zink to Triple H in a hell of a hog pen match, which we need to talk about. Uh, And the list goes on and on and on. He has been everywhere and did everything. Yeah, don't forget, um, he was in WCW. uh, under. I believe he started under a shoot name, but then at one point, Prior to the Godwins, they were uh, Tex Schlesinger and Shanghai Piers. That was a cool team. That had like a like a Wild West feel to it. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to go around those parts where Tex Schlesinger and Shanghai Piers hang out. It was. You go to a different saloon. You go to a different saloon if you see those guys in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, revert back to like the Irwins. This was the new edition of the Irwins to me. That's a, yeah, yeah. That's a, uh, and one of the, yeah, the one, uh, Irwin was Hog Irwin. Uh huh. Wow, great, great comparison, Mark. I'm getting better at this. I really am. You are. Yeah, you're doing all right. Yeah. So, John, we need to get him on the line. This is going to be a great phone call with Mark Canterbury, Henry O. Godwin. Ah, so many people that he wrestled. I just, I hope he opens up and tell us tells us anything because I'm giddy. I really am. I'm a hog farmer I'm tonight. I'm excited about this one too. Yeah, yeah. I am in a mood to hear some good wrestling stories. Yeah. Well, we have to do one thing first, John. Do you remember? I do remember. We have to hear from Collar and Elbow, uh, makers of hats, hoodies, T-shirts, uh, eye patches. It goes on and on. Vests, pants. Yeah, it does go on and on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Color Noble, Al Snow. We have a promo code. It is Can Crushers, all one word, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, and you save 10%. Here comes Al Snow to tell you about Color Noble, and when we come back, we will have Henry O. Godwin on the phone. I hope he gives us a pig call, John. That would be awesome. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Uh, 
And welcome back, Can Crushers listeners. It is I, the English professor. We just heard from Al Snow over at Collar and Elbow. Uh, and it's now time for us to introduce our very special guest on this week's Spotlight, Mr. Mark Canterbury, uh, known to wrestling fans as Henry O'Godwin. Uh, Mr. Canterbury, thanks so much for joining us on Can Crushers. Thank you, Can Crushers, Mark and John. Let's get this going, man. Yeah, let's go. I love when we dive right into these, John. I agree. Um, so it's all about uh, fun, right, boys? That's correct. Yeah. Um, let's start uh, in the beginning. Um, as far as training goes, um, talk a little bit about um, uh, George South and the Italian Stein individually. We've heard a good deal of. Uh, about George South and who he's trained and you know you hear like he pounded the the basics in his guys and footwork there's not a whole lot known I don't think about the Italian stallion as far as his being a trainer uh tell us a little bit what that was like Stow was was funny and just I mean he was a good worker but he was a he taught me he taught me the the naughty things of wrestling and George South taught me you know, in, in the physical, you know, I had to work style every night. So he taught me the physical part of it and and I'm so grateful that he did. And George taught me more of the psychological and and that kind of stuff. So they were both a big part of my beginning and uh, you know, I owe a lot to them. Yeah, I would have put it the other way around because with George South doing his things in the AML right now and, you know, being retired and, you know, in and out of wrestling here and there, he's been a son of a gun. And I always saw Ita- uh, Italian Stallion as a baby face, but you're saying Stallion was uh, a little bit dirty behind the ears. Yeah, yeah. George, man, what, George could have a... A uh, thirty-minute match with a broomstick, and you'll all be entertained. Yeah, I yeah. I agree. I agree. So yeah. we're just gonna jump around because that's what we do. John will ask you one thing, and I'll just bounce to something twenty-five years later. Um, yeah. I want to know because you've worked with anybody and everybody from we said it in our intro from. Uh, the Undertaker to Tom Zink to anybody. I mean, no disrespect to Tom Zink, but did you have one that you're like, I knew? Because you hear Flair and Steamboat saying they same thing you said about George South, that they could wrestle and just blow everybody away. Did you have somebody you felt that comfortable with that you're like, man, I'm working with X tonight, and I just, I'm so happy about it? Uh, you know what? I had, when I first started up in WWF, uh, I had some matches after I got going, you know, before me and Hunter started our marriage there. Uh, <laughs> oh, we'll get into that. Yeah, I had a good match on Monday Night Raw, I think it was, yeah, with Kevin Nash one night. And then I think right before that, I had one with Taker, my first time, you know, because when I went up there, I... I didn't know really anybody up there that good. Of course, me and Hunter went up there about the same time. But uh, I was riding with Double J. Me and Jeff Jarrett rode together, started riding together. And But uh, I loved working with Taker and, and Kevin Nash. Just the big man thing. Yep. And I felt comfortable working with them. You know, like they were going, we just took care of each other. Nice. That it- you hear a lot of bad things about Nash. We we all know everything about Taker. You hear a lot of bad things about Nash. So it's good to hear you say that about Kevin because we met him, John, what was it, nine years ago now? And he, Something like that, yeah, yeah. What an amazing human being. But you never hear yeah. good stories about Kevin, which is sad. Oh, my God. I got, I got, I could write a book just on Kevin Nash stories, so. You know, we were we were together in WCW, me, him, and and Tex, because I, I guess I can tell this. He won't give a shit. I'll tell this story on him. Yeah. Uh, we lived in, in Marietta, right outside of Atlanta. We were all working, you know, wrestling for WCW. 
and a lot of the boys lived in this high rise, so we moved in there. And and some of the Braves, like a uh, couple uh, Smoltz lived there, and uh, Gant. So you know, it was a pretty cool place. It was a gated, you know, gated place. You had to come through a guardhouse, so it was nice for us. <clears throat> but uh, Kevin and his wife lived two floors right above us. And they had this little ankle biter dog. And Kevin would always go out at night, take her down, take her out to pee. So if Kevin came to our apartment first, we would get so high, he would forget to take the dog out. He would go back <laughs> up to the apartment and the dog would either shit or piss <laughs> right after he got back up there. So that was always a big, a big thing with us. We used to tease the hell out of him about that. His wife would say, "I thought you took the dog out." He was, he said, "No, I went down to uh, Texas and uh, Shanghai, and I forgot to go out." <laughs> so if you ever talk to Kevin again, ask him about that. Wow, for sure, for sure. <laughs> taking the dog out. Uh, yeah, go ahead, John. And speaking of WCW, you look at some of the stars they had there when you were there i want to talk about shanghai pierce and tex lessinger obviously kevin nash scott hall those guys have talked about they left i guess they wanted uh, uh greener pastures shanghai pierce and tex lessinger were a cool team kind of a, a wild west feel to them it seemed like you guys were getting over a little bit and then before we knew it you guys were gone was that uh, were you guys let go or was that kind of a conscious effort on your part to say we want to go to the WWF and see if we can make a few more bucks. Well, I, I know at the time they, you know, Flair was in retire. He had come out of retirement while we were there. And then he, you know, Bischoff took over and, uh, I'll tell this real quick. We used to go to Council of Georgia to a bar called Crystal Chandelier. Me and Arn and Pee Wee and, and we would always go. And then uh, one night, Flair went out with us. Well, Bischoff was doing the WCW magazine. He was, you know, he was trying to climb the ladder. And uh, his wife was with him. And we were there at, uh, in the VIP section of Flair and Arn and me and Pee Wee and Tex. Well, it was weird because Bischoff was like challenging Tex, saying he knew karate. But before you know it, Tex was over over backwards over a table. I know he he was he was challenging Tex to like a kickbox match or something. You know, Bischoff had a little bit to drink and but Tex took him backwards over a table and his wife come running to me and Tex and begging Tex not to do anything else, not to hurt Bischoff. So that's my that's my Bischoff story. Oh damn but, uh, yeah, they, so they, when all this was occurring, they let me and Phineas and Hunter, we all got let go at the same time. And I, and, and then they started bringing some of the flares, old, you know, the older guys back. And so, but it was a blessing for, especially for all three of us, because hell, look where Hunter's at. Right. You know, if he would, if he would have got held back down there, who knows? He, you know, there would have been no hog pen match or anything. So, you know, I'm glad that us three got let go. Uh, you know, we signed a two year contract and it was up and they didn't want to renew it, but it was a blessing because we had Vince had such more of an opportunity. You know, he was using younger guys where I, I don't think WCW was really doing that at the time. They were still trying to use all the older guys, which is fine, you know, but uh, we just had more, a better opportunity up there. And, you know, Phineas come up about a year after I was up there. But during that time, that's when me and Triple H did our hawk in match and that whole thing. And that's a perfect segue because that was my next question uh, about the hog pen match. Um, if I recall, and I have the, the recollection of a gnat, but you guys were pretty close to the main event. 
And the Hawks were lingering around in that pen the whole night. So we know. Okay. <laughs> from about from about 2 o'clock to, we, to that night. So they were shitting and peeing, and there was mud, dirt in there, which turned to like six inches of mud. So how did you, how did you know where or where not, what wasn't or what was mud, or did you guys just say, screw it and let's get covered in shit tonight, boys? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, when they come up with this idea, it, it really sounded cool, but I think all the boys and even some people in the office thought it was going to be just a ha-ha match. But it was far from that. I mean, I was sore for two days, three days, and Hunter was too. Of course, he got, you know, I was teasing him. I said, you know, I scarred you for life. He got 15 stitches in his back from that match. And, I don't remember that, yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, and then <clears throat> after the match, when we went back, Vince grabbed both of us and took us in the office and said, I cannot. He said, that's the best match of the night. And he hadn't even seen the main event. So. <clears throat> and, and, you know, all the boys really respected that, too, and which meant a lot and helped me and Hunter out to just fit in. And uh, so that's how that all started. And I'm grateful for WWF giving me the opportunity. Do you think, John, I'm going to step on you here for a minute. Do you, sure, th- ahead, no, no. Do you think that's the match that essentially put Henry Godwin, like, on the map? Oh, yeah. 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 I think it put both of us on the map. The, yeah. Uh, Triple H at that time, yes, I would agree. Uh, yep. Uh, when you look at that era, Mark, just before the Attitude Era, every wrestler seemed to have a job, you know, a tax man, a repossessor, a cop. And it goes garbage on, on, man. And on. Don't forget Duke. Garbage man. Yeah, a garbage man. Duke the dumpster. Yeah. Were you, okay? Were you okay with the hog farmer thing? Was that? What, did you ever say something? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, you know, I've been doing that most of my life, and then now I'm doing it now. I got hogs now. And, uh, so it was, yeah, it was like riding a bike. You know, just took to it like a hog takes to shit. You know, it, it was easy. Yeah. Yeah. And what did the O stand for? Let's just tell it. Do you know what the O stood for? Well, when we got let go, it was about three weeks after we got let go. I I already, well, I'll tell you who helped me, who talk, who spoke for me was Harley Race and Kevin Nash talked to the office of WWE and told them to get me up there. So within three weeks, uh, the office had called and, you know, sent me uh, my ticket and said, you know, Vince wants to talk to you and meet you. So when I flew up there, uh, I went to the office there in Stanford and went up. I can't remember what floor he was on, but him and J.J. Dillon were waiting on me. And we went in the little kayfabe off his secret office there and uh, talked for like three hours. and come up with the Henry Godwin gimmick, but the O stands Vince. It's either maybe his granddad or somebody in his family. Their name was Orpheus got Orpheus. So he wanted my uh-huh. book to be H O G. So he named me Henry Orpheus Godwin. We both thought it it was Oliver uh, probably until twelve seconds ago. Because we really <laughs> And then uh, Tex, they named him Phineas I Godwin, and I named I named him Ike. So it was Phineas Ike Godwin. <laughs> Pig. Pig. Hey, you guys had a, a couple of tag team title runs. Um, you did some matches with the LOD. Um, talk about that injury. That that looked like a really rough doomsday device. It kind of came down in the back of your head and, and Mark and I being kids and watching at home at the time, I uh, knew you probably weren't well after that. Well, you know, I cracked, broke my neck that night. Um, I, I'll tell this story. I've told it on podcasts and everything. So, uh, 
Hawk was a little messed up at TV that night, and I didn't want to do it with him being in that condition. So I just went, we went to the office, and I said, you know, I just don't feel comfortable doing this move. I've never taken it. <clears throat> and uh, they said, well, the office wants you to, wants you to take the flip. And, and Animal even spoke up and said, well, we can just do where I go down with him. And I said, no, they want you to do the flip. So Phineas spoke up, said, I've taken it before, I'll do it. And they said, now they want him to take it. So sure enough, broke my damn neck that night and uh, was supposed to be off about 15 weeks. And, you know, I, I don't know if you guys know, I come back in like six and a half. Yeah. Uh, wrestled, you know, with a damn broken neck for seven weeks. Vince had a trainer with me, you know, working on me at not after every show. And then my last match with me and Vince was against, uh, we were doing the Southern Justice gimmick. And we had uh, Road Dog and Billy Badass that night. And they were, Vince was going to drop the straps to us again. And then he, they talked to me and you know, I told them I was in pretty much pain and they said, well, let's get you home and find out what's going on and we can always come back and do this. And so I went home and had to have spinal fusion. So that was the end of that. Do you, was but it, I, but, Go ahead. I, but I did not stooge, you know, hawk out. I just said I didn't feel comfortable doing it. But. Right. Do you feel, with without getting into details, do you feel that you were pushed to come back that fast, or was it your choice to come back that fast, and do you regret it? Because essentially, you know, down the line, that same injury um, put you in retirement somewhat. Yeah, it was. It was pretty much me. I was missing it. Just pushing and, yourself, pushing yourself to get back. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I, I knew, I thought it was getting better, but when I started working again that first week, I, I was doing 90 pound dumbbell presses with my left arm and couldn't do 20 with my right. So I knew something wasn't right. So I, that's when I told them and they said, well, you better go get a check. And so I had spinal fusion done in Nashville and that's it. And that was it. But uh, essentially, I'll skip ahead if, John, uh, I know you want to bring something up. But uh, essentially, you've returned to the ring because the last two months you've been at IWC. You were in the 16-bit challenge. That was a huge surprise. And then yeah. then you faced uh, the good-smelling Chase Gold with Ella Shea. Chase Gold. Chase Gold. Yeah. Um, he got a win over you. Uh, with some help, and then Derek Dillinger said some words to you as you were leaving, and it was, uh, is there unfinished business there? Are you coming back to IWC, or are you just tired yeah, of all this? I haven't decided when, but I'm definitely going to get that damn slot bucket back. I just got to uh, figure out what's going to happen. Okay. There you go. I, I'm excited because it, that leaves you to wonder just when. So uh, I'm excited about that. John, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mark Henry sounds determined to me. He sounds determined. Uh, so that's bad news for Chase Gold, I think. And Ella Shea. Yeah. At, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're going to plan something. I'm going to have to find me a good little partner. So I'm looking. I'll step up right now. If you're really looking for one, I'll step. No, you really don't want me. I'm better behind the mic without anybody seeing me. Well, you can manage this then. Deal. Justin Plummer. Uh, make that happen. <laughs> actually, we, we have to make the shout out to Jenny Plummer because she's the one that actually runs IWC. Justin is just literally the face of the business. You know, Miss Jenny definitely is the backbone. See? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I wanted to ask about the uh, the Brawl for All tournament um, and Russo's uh, brainchild. You know, it looked like it had some potential. UFC was kind of coming around at that time and making some waves. 
Um, what was the sense with the guys in the locker room? Hey, this is a crazy idea, or you know what? Let's go out there and shoot and see what the heck happens, and may the better man win. Well, you know, none of us really boxers. Um, now, bar fights are a little different than boxing. You know, anything goes in a bar fight. But uh, yeah, I think it was a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, I just had sinus surgery, nose surgery, so I didn't really want to do it. But they talked me into it. And, you know, me and Bradshaw pounded on each other. I bloodied his nose and mouth, and he hit me in the nose. And my um, right side of my face was numb and, like, pins and needles for about six weeks. So I thought I'd done something to it. But it, uh, it messed with – you know, it didn't bother me. It didn't hurt my career, but it did – I think affect some of the other guys, even, I mean, mentally, you know, it, damn, I just got knocked out on TV and <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I didn't think it was good for the boys. You know, okay. I didn't like it, so. Henry, how much wrestling do you watch or you do, do you keep up with now? I mean, is there like AEW, WWE, anything that you're like, you literally sit at home and watch? I don't, I don't really watch anymore. Um, I'll, I'll go through it and check it out a little bit. Um, it's, it's a lot different. You know, I guess that's why I'm not into it because it's like a lot of talking, <laughs> not enough action for me, but you know, I'm old school. So but we've brought that but up a ton. Yeah. AEW uh, is doing pretty good. No, uh, some good talent down there. Yeah. NXT's got pretty good talent. Yeah, they do. They really do. It, it, we but hate you know, this. Go ahead, John. I can imagine, like, the stuff we did back in the 90s. You know, that stuff would not, like, us in the Confederate shirts, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff and all the, <laughs> the antics we used to do back then. I, I think it would offend people now. Yeah. It, it, Nobody was offended back then. Everybody enjoyed it, but times are different. And I just, you know, they they don't, they stay away from that kind of stuff. But that's life. You're, you're glad you worked when you did? Yeah. So yeah. glad. I wish I'd have been back in the 70s and 80s and then the 90s. That would have yeah. been awesome. Um, so when the, the Undertaker called it a career, uh, a bunch of wrestlers came out to pay homage to him, and you and Phineas were among those guys. Uh, was there uh, a group of you known as the Bone Street Crew? Were you in that? And was Yoko Zun? Is that true? He was the uh, kind of the ringleader of that thing? Yeah, I was, I was one of the original ones. Uh, Yoko started it. It was... Myself, Godfather, Taker, Yoko, and Makishi, Paul Bear. And then expanded a little bit. Then when Tex come up, he went, we took him out and he got initiated that night. And there were some beers and some Jack Daniels involved in that. And he passed. So, <laughs> yeah, it was just a, a group, you know, I'm so tired of hearing all this racist shit that they, say in the media because BSK was so diverse. We had uh, rednecks, hillbillies, black, uh, Asian, Hawaiian, Puerto Rican, Samoan. I mean, can you imagine us running the country? We'd have a hell of a country, (laughs) wouldn't we? We would. We would. John, he brought up two great things. uh, He's speaking my language now. Beer and Jack Daniels. Yeah. I want to know if we can bring this Bone Street crew back that I can become a member. I'm just inviting myself into everything, uh, Henry. Yeah. It, it was pretty exclusive, Mark. It tur- you know, I heard that Yoko Zuna was the guy that made all the decisions along with Undertaker, and it's pretty exclusive. So I don't know if we can get in. Yeah. Maybe maybe we need a, a, a you know a PR guy, somebody that talks, and maybe we can bring you in for that. See? I'm managing them in IWC, and I'm going oh. to uh, – make my way into the bone street crew john you're out see ya <laughs> but, uh, 
But I got to tell you about Survivor Series. You know, Bruce Pritchard called me in text. And, and Bruce called me. I was actually on vacation at my son's in Pigeon Forks, Tennessee. And uh, Bruce called and said, yeah, how you doing? I, I, was, I was like, what the hell? I ain't talked to Bruce in a while. And uh, so I talked to him and he goes, well, Undertaker's having his farewell at Survivor Series and he wants you to be there. And I said, uh fuck okay i'm there <laughs> but man we when we we all haven't been together in like 23 24 years and we've seen each other in passing but never all of us together so it was uh tex and me sabio uh rakishi godfather taker uh timmy white was there Hung out with us all night. I'll tell you a couple of stories about that in a minute. <laughs> uh, Booker T hung for a little bit. Uh, so it was, I mean, it was a real good time. But me and uh, went through like four bottles of Jack that night and like a hundred beers. Holy shit. <laughs> and Godfather Baker had to put me and Phineas to bed. <laughs> they, they claim there's a video out there of us being asses in the elevator and falling over. <laughs> I know I have seen the video. It's pretty hilarious. But, uh, yeah, we just what a great time for us to get together. And then we get to talk about the old times with Yoko and Paul Bear and uh, Fuji. And so, it, I mean, it was, and Brian Adams, you know, young out with some and, so it was good wow uh john go ahead yeah uh, i wanted to ask um about the financial situation at the time we've talked to a couple other guys that worked around the same time in the wwe um and kind of the consensus is you know the 80s were over and we weren't quite into the attitude era yet and there wasn't the money to be made like there was you know just before that time and just after that time um, did you find that to be the case too? Were you guys not well, making the money that, that some, some other errors made? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, you got to, if you're guaranteed so much money, you got to think of both that. So we always tried to do new things and come up with different stuff to try to improve our relations and our, you know, our, just our, or gimmick. We worked on it hard, you know, and, and that was part of BSK too. You know, we supported each other. We hung out together. We, I mean, we did everything together and, and we have tried to help each other promote ourselves, you know, and, uh, all the guys were good at that. Godfather, Rikishi, shit, Savio, and Taker, you know, even Paul, because they'd been around and done it. So it had a lot of influence and, a lot of good knowledge and we just tried to push each other that way. But, you know, after we were there, after finance got up there and then we started making better money. So it was, uh, we've done good there the last couple of years. Real good. It was going up. Nice. You spoke highly of, uh, diesel a little earlier. There were, uh, no run-ins the, with the click being different factions in the locker room, different kind of fraternities. Not, not at all. I mean, you know, uh, Brett and Sean had some history there, and I, and I, I think some of the guys, you know, get irritated sometimes. But there was never, I mean, hell, we a couple of times it was like the BSK showed up, and then the Click showed up, and we just partied together that night. So uh, we did that in San Antonio. As a matter of fact, we went to take uh, You know, we always wanted to go to strip club because. We knew we wouldn't get in trouble there, no fights. Because when you go out to a country bar or something, the dance club, everybody's drinking a lot of courage, so they want to try to start shit with you. So we just gave that up and went somewhere quiet and dark and sat in the corner. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought John was going to ask. I thought John had one more question for you. Do you do, John? No, no. Uh, I know you have 
some, uh, I don't want to say animosity, but some strong feelings here, Mark, because you're a big Hillbilly Jim fan. I do. I, and I, the Godwins dumped him. I know that hurt your feelings when we were kids. So I just wanted you to go ahead and, and clear the air there, Mark. I, I did. I was going to bring that up. Um, why? Like, he, he was... You cut out just a second. I didn't hear everything. Uh, you guys dumped Hillbilly Jim at, at one point in... There's a question that we ask on Can Crushers, if we could have ever been anybody. Um, one of my answers is always, I, I wouldn't mind have been Hillbilly Jim from like my childhood because he was near the top with Hogan. He had his runs, he, but he was a, a humbled man. And that's where I feel I am. I don't need to be Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan. Um, in retrospect, and no disrespect, I don't need to be Steve Lombardi or Barry Horowitz either. I wanted to be that you know mid-tier guy. But when you guys got rid yeah. of uh, Hillbilly Jim, you broke my heart. Yeah, well, it, it broke my heart, too. What really broke my heart is that the office wouldn't let him get involved when he was managing us, which made him look like a 290-pound pussy. Yeah. And we didn't like that, and we brought it up a lot because, I mean, Hillbilly was cock strong. He was big. and He's still you know, in great we, shape. Yeah, and when we started riding with Hillbilly, oh, man, we had so much fun. I mean, just three redneck Hillbillies riding around and being silly and, you know, talking about what we're going to do that night. And and Hillbilly was a big influence, too. And, but it wasn't up to us. Uh, actually, Hillbilly, when they turned us heel, uh, HBJ went to the office and said he didn't think it would be good for him to be a heel with the heel. So that's why they let him go with us. Uh, yeah. And we hated it. But he was working for Coliseum Home Video at the time, and he had his, you know, his thing there, and he did real good there. They love him there. And, uh, <clears throat> so he thought if, you know, if he turned heel and, you know, we always – had the rebel flag and of course he believes a southern boy too he's a, but uh he just felt that wouldn't be good for his what he was doing at the time uh mr godwin we know you have prior engagements tonight but uh i'm gonna ask you right now if uh we can reach back out to you in the near future to do possibly a part two because I'd like to get some more stories, um, if you're willing, to talk about Hillbilly and some of those car rides. We didn't even touch about your first time on the road, which is an amazing car ride. I just read that story. Um, would that be something? Uh, uh, yeah. Who they threw at WCW when I went just to do be an extra and uh, worked there at Watts. And then they said, hey, can you go on the road? I said, yeah. When do you want me to go? And they said, tonight. <laughs> So that's when I uh, got Arn Anderson and Stow and George were giving me clothes because I, I thought I was just going down there and then we were coming back, you know, to Carolina. But uh, I left that night and rode with uh, uh, Harley Race was driving, Hercules Hernandez was in the passenger seat, and me and Barbarian was in the back seat. Imagine pulling up to that freaking vehicle. <laughs> yeah, but we'll, but we'll save that for part two because it's a it's an interesting first night. I have to tell you that. Awesome. We'll set that up in the near future. Uh, thanks for stopping by Can Crush tonight. Go do your thing. Again, God bless you for what you are doing. You are a, an amazing human being. Well, I appreciate you guys, and we'll, we'll continue where we left off in the near future. Just let me know. Excellent. I appreciate it very much. Thanks so much. All right, boys. You all have a good one. You too. And that was Mark Canterbury, uh, known in the wrestling world as Henry O. Godwin. And we learned, Mark, the O stood for uh, Orpheus, which was a distant relative or a great-grandfather or something of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. So I'm glad we finally know the story behind that. Do you like that or do you like Oliver better? I, I still like Oliver. I do too. I really do. Yeah. I, I do. I think Ike is cool for Phineas. Uh, yeah. Did you know? Name for him. Did you know it was Ike? I didn't. No. I thought it was like Irving or Irwin. 
but I uh, thought it was kind I, of a, a shout out, like I said at the opening, maybe to the uh, Irwin brothers or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, um, we're wrong about that. Yeah, imagine that's well. I had, I had, I had one thing right. Then yeah, I just, no, but that's why we do these. We we, we learn something. Right, for sure. So, guys, uh, just to precursor this again, yes, he will be back as we found out he had prior engagements right before the recording, and he's committed. Uh, he, he wants to come back. He wants to tell some more road stories. There's a couple other questions, John, that I didn't get to, but, man, uh, I love talking wrestling to – we were middle school, high school at this time. John, this was our go-to, and – I just get so pumped when wrestlers' talent at that era come on and talk to us. This is going to have me jazzing the rest of the week now. I'm a child again. He's a great storyteller, too, Mark Canterbury is. Um, And it seems like we were just kind of scratching the surface of some great stories. But uh, what stood out to me was, I mean, what in the world are you thinking challenging uh phineas just to like a, a kickboxing match in the middle of a club or wherever the hell they were um and he sent eric bischoff flying over a table maybe there's a lesson to be learned there mark maybe tomorrow you and i ought to go into work beat up our bosses get fired and then maybe there'll be brighter horizons i agree i can't even answer that with a straight <laughs> face I go into the borough manager and just kick him in the head. Here you go. I'm done. See you later. That, uh, yeah, that that was a wild story. Um, that was pretty hilarious. And John what happened to a better guy. I no, I agree. How about the uh, dirty George South? Isn't so dirty, but the Italian stallion's a son of a gun. Yeah, that's interesting. That you know. He was, we used to see him on NWA and WCW, um, good lower to, to, to mid card guy, super baby face, not super baby face. Think, yeah. Not the guy you would think teaches you all the heel tactics and how to fight dirty, but, uh, stallion had all the tricks. Yeah. And he's teaching them to Godwin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. This was a great Great interview, and John, literally as we're doing the outro, I'm setting up the next one with him as he's driving to his appointment, so this is amazing. He's excited to be on Can Crushers. We're excited to have him back. Maybe he should just be a co-host with us. Maybe he should. Yeah, you're right. Maybe he should. Uh, Yeah, you're in with him. You guys cleared the air about Hillbilly Jim. You made your piece. Uh, He's offered you to be his manager, spokesperson, press secretary. I, so if I can gig. continue, if I can continue to drink, maybe I can be part of the the Bone Street crew. You, we, we've talked about the story about you going drinking with the Beverly Brothers, so you cannot be in this. Yeah, uh, I guess not. I guess not. Yeah, that's your style. I, I think I'm more of a click. An uh, alcohol, an alcoholic, is how you're calling yeah, me. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Remember, John, just because you're trash. It doesn't mean you can't do great things, Mark. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. <laughs>